readers of Tom Dispatch know that I uh, worked for several years on and off in Afghanistan and wrote about that in my last book. And after that came out a couple of years ago, I looked around for something else, another place to go uh, where I might be of use. And in my book on Afghanistan, Kabul in Winter, I was very hard on aid programs, and especially the program in Afghanistan, American aid in Afghanistan, which is kind of a phantom and hasn't really gotten there or done much of anything for the country. But I did learn in my experience there that some aid organizations do a very good job. So I went to one of them, the International Rescue Committee, and volunteered my services for a year as a writer and photographer. And I'm working with their gender-based violence unit. Gender-based violence, or GBV, is the sort of um, code for what we used to call, and what I still call, violence against women. And violence against women in post-conflict zones, post-conflict countries, always escalates. Uh, women are, uh, in the course of a war, are always targets of rape, sometimes very systematically targets of rape as a strategy of war. And then so-called peace comes when the peace accords are signed and the war is supposedly over. So men stop shooting at each other, but the women and the children who've been assaulted all through the war still are fair game. And in addition, then, when men come back to their families, domestic violence escalates enormously. So the work that I do uh, with IRC is to work in this program to combat violence against women, working with women uh, in village communities. And we call this project uh, a global crescendo, Women's Voices from Conflict Zones. It's a, a kind of photography project that isn't really about photography. What happens is I meet with women in small groups, in villages, uh, in various countries. I've been working in West Africa, in Cote d'Ivoire, or some people know it as Ivory Coast, um, Liberia, and most recently in Sierra Leone, and I'm just headed for the DRC, the, the Congo, to carry out the project. Um, I spend about a month and a half in each place. I meet with women in small groups. I give them very simple digital cameras and only the most minimal camera instruction. I teach them how to point the camera and how to shoot it, and that's it. And then we ask them to take photographs of things that are problems for them or for other women in their communities, and also things that they like to see, things that they would like to see more of in their communities. And they come back with the most amazing pictures. And um, even the, the presence of women in the community armed with little point-and-shoot digital cameras changes power relationships right away because in Africa women are not supposed to have access to any kind of technology. Even the radio belongs to the man. The bicycles belong to the man. Uh, women aren't supposed to use things like that. So the whole community starts looking differently at the women who are using the cameras and the women start looking differently at their community and really focus their attention on the problems and what would seem to them to be some progress. And then at the end of a, a few weeks of working on photography and talking about the issues they've identified, we, I enlarge a bunch of pictures that they've selected and we put on a show for the chiefs and the village notables. And the women get up and talk about their pictures because this program is really a program in giving women practice in the skills they need 
to stand up in front of the powers that be and advocate for themselves and for the needs of women and children. And they do that very, very well. One of my colleagues in Cote d'Ivoire uh, invented a little slogan to tell the women. And it sounds much better in the Baule language, but I'll give it to you in English. Um, she tells the women that the lens of the camera is your eyes, and the memory card is in your brain, and the photograph comes out of your mouth when you talk about it. So the women begin by saying, I can use a camera, and they end the program by saying, I am a camera. And uh, they've really practiced those skills. We've had, um, we've had some major successes and some uh, kind of dodgy situations, as you can imagine, because Africans are not used to having women get up and try to change things. Um, I think our greatest success was in a village in uh, Côte d'Ivoire called Zata. The women got up before the chiefs, and this was in a village where until that time women had not been permitted to look at chiefs. They had never attended a village meeting. They had never spoken in public before, not one of them. But they came to the, to the meeting, they got up with their photographs, and they showed to the chief a lot of photographs of how hard women in Zata village have to work. And they, showed, they said that if they don't work that hard, their husbands will beat them. And then they showed pictures of the work they do in the home, the work they do on the farms and the plantations, the work they do selling in the market, the way they take care of the children and send the children to school. And then one woman stood up and said, and this is how women are treated. And she showed her photograph of a battered woman, all bruised and cut and in terrible shape. And the head chief said, that's, that is enough, that is enough. He said he hated violence of all kinds. There had been too much violence in the village and in the country. If there was violence in his village, he wanted to know about it and he wanted it to stop. So he invited the group of women who had formed around this photography project to join his council of advisors and advise him on what rules needed to be changed, what punishment should be given out, and how they could stop the, all the violence against women and children. And these women are still serving on his advisory council, and the village is a changed place. And it happened just like that. And I love to tell that story because when you're working on trying to make social change, whether it's in Africa or Chicago or New York or wherever, there are always the people who say, well, yes, that's a, that's a good cause, that's a good thing to work towards, but, you know, change takes time. And very often that's perfectly true. But in this village, change didn't take any time at all. We did that whole project in under six weeks. And all of a sudden, women who had never participated in the life of the community or had any role in making a decision are now central to the governance of the community. And all the women in the village attend uh, those community meetings. So that's a huge success.